Buti na para ginipan pala. When I was a teenager, I had a lot of issues in my life. I wasn't comfortable with how I look. I felt a lot of peer pressure that led me to vices and bad habits. But I surpassed all of these challenges. Are you experiencing these issues too and would like to cope with and overcome them? Then it's time for you to develop something in you. You need to improve, need to change, and that change begins inside you. Hi guys, I'm Teacher Mark, and welcome dear senior high school learners to your show where we will learn to become more aware of who we are and better understand ourselves and the people around us. I will guide you in your journey of personal empowerment to become more positive as a person, to be your best version of yourself every day, and help you raise your confidence, self-motivation, and more. Commit to your vision or plan in achieving your aims and goals in life. Join me in our first episode as we see your limitless potential. Let's rock! This is Personal Development on DepEd TV. Welcome to my room. This is where I usually recall everything that happened to me the whole day. And as I assess how my day went, I always discover something in me. New skills, attitude, and even talent. I still have a lot to discover about myself. Today, we will rediscover yourself. We will reflect on how we see ourselves as individuals and understand our character, particularly in your stage as young and late adolescents. But first, let us define personal development. Personal development or self-development is a process of discovering oneself by realizing one's potential and capabilities that are shaped over time, either by studying or formal school or through environmental factors. Start examining yourself, most specifically how you react to things, your beliefs, traits, and values. This is one of the most complicated things to do in this world. Come and take a closer look. I will show you some concepts of understanding oneself from famous men in the past. A Greek philosopher named Socrates once said, An unexamined life is not worth living. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom, said Aristotle. Know thyself is an old maxim or aphorism which in time has been used in varied literature and has consequently gained different meanings. One of its meanings is recorded in the Greek Encyclopedia of Knowledge called the Suda. More concepts on understanding oneself from famous wise men. Thomas Hobbes also discussed his own views about the maxim from which he used the phrase, read thyself, in his famous work, The Leviathan. He stressed that an individual could learn more by studying others and that he or she can do this by engaging himself or herself in the reading of books. However, Hobbes emphasized that a person learns more by studying oneself. Thus, this statement leads us to the realization that knowing oneself is the open door that leads us to knowing others better. Authors of other materials related to this idea believe that know thyself is a moral epistemological injunction. This suggests that this philosophy is about acquiring the skills of a way of questioning or challenging the person to gain careful understanding of oneself. It is a form of self-concern. René Descartes, the father of modern philosophy, proposed his theory that a person's existence depends on his or her perception. He stated that the mind is the seat of consciousness. This means that it is in the mind that we know everything about ourselves, like our identity, passion, interests, feelings, and or intellect. Thus, everything that we are comes from the mind. The self-concept theory is one abstract and general idea about himself, particularly toward his unique personality and his perception about his set of values, points of view, and behavior. According to Carl Rogers, a humanist psychologist, 
there are three different parts of self-concept. Self-image, or how you see yourself. Our self-image is a mixture of different attributes, including our physical characteristics, personality traits, and social roles. It doesn't necessarily coincide with reality. Self-esteem, or how much you value yourself. There are different factors that can influence self-esteem, including how we compare ourselves to others and how others respond to us. And the last part is ideal self, or how you wish you could be. Most of the time, the way we see ourselves and how we would like to see ourselves do not quite match up. Let's continue learning more concepts about understanding oneself. Sigmund Freud, who is a well-known psychologist, neurologist, and the creator of psychoanalysis theory and the father of psychoanalysis, proposed that there are three components of personality within us. The id, ego, and superego that certainly play a vital role of how we think of ourselves. Freud explained that man's personality is driven by the pleasure principle. This means that the nature of id is to satisfy man's desire without thinking much of the situation. This nature is being developed at young age or present from birth. To illustrate this idea, let us take this as an example. An infant will cry if he or she wants to be fed to satisfy his or her hunger. An infant cannot exactly explain what he or she really wants. Also, infants do grab things and would want to get things on their hands, not minding if they hurt nor if they are important or not. All they want is to get them because they want them. This is the nature of id. When the id wants it, the rest are no longer important. However, this instinct is controlled by the ego and superego, aspects that are developed later in a man's life. The ego is the second component of the personality that is developed approximately at the age of three. This operates according to reality, which makes it possible for the id to work in a more proper and satisfactory ways. The ego will give a more socially accepted means of getting the desires and wants of a person without getting to hurting others' feelings. In other words, it is the job of the ego to provide a man some guidelines on how to behave accordingly while he fulfills his pleasure. This component of our personality is manifested whenever we try to satisfy our cravings without compromising our self-image to others. Freud believed that the superego is an aspect of man that begins to manifest as a child turns five. This is the last component of personality which holds our moral judgments and concept of right and wrong that are believed to be acquired from the family and the environment. This personality is developed as man learns the culture of distinguishing right from wrong based on the set of guidelines and standards that are known to people, which might have been probably imposed by the people in the community like parents, teachers, elders, or the community as a whole. Therefore, the superego directs a man's life for him to avoid hurting others. Another concept on understanding oneself from an Asian philosopher from the East. According to Lao Tzu, knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. After learning the concepts of understanding oneself, it's time for you to understand yourself. How is like to be an adolescent? Adolescence is the period when a young individual develops from a child into an adult. There are a lot of changes that happen to an adolescent like you. And some of those are how you look, how you take your role in the community, how other people expect you in making decisions on your own, and how you perceive yourself. Although the self is one of the determinants of what we think about ourselves, it is also the result of what we think and or do. Many people believe that we are the product of our own experiences. These experiences shape our unique qualities and habits that define who we are as a person and how we differ from others. Your own qualities that make you unique are characteristics. 
When you do something repeatedly and regularly, it is a habit. While the skills or knowledge you have gained are called experiences because you have already done them in the past. Now, let us focus on when and how our characteristics, habits, and experiences develop and manifest by identifying some of the factors that may affect a person's self. The foundation of all human behavior, it is our sense of identity and of who we are as an individual. Walang tigil ang takbo ng utak namin. Pinipilit sagutin ng maraming tanong. Bakit niya kaya nagawa yun? Ayaw natin na? May kulang ba sa akin? May mali ba sa akin? Pangit ba ako? Pangit ba ang katawan ko? Kapalit-palit ba ako? No. Then why? Self-esteem, also known as self-worth, is your evaluation of your own worth. It may be positive or negative. Positive self-esteem is the valuation that is pleasing and acceptable according to your standard and that of others. While negative self-esteem is the opposite, which is feeling distraught or down and unaccepted by others. High self-esteem is when we have positive view of ourselves. This tends to lead to having confidence in our own abilities, self-acceptance, not worrying about what others would think, and being optimistic. According to Takwarodi and Swan, there are many factors to identify the level of self-esteem of an individual. Some of these are your own appearance. One of the most common self-report measures of self-esteem is the Rosenberg. This is a self-esteem scale. Indicated here is a list of statements dealing with your general feelings about yourself. Bring out your pen and paper and let's measure your self-esteem. Write on your paper the number that corresponds to how strongly you agree or disagree with each statement. You may answer an online version too. Give one point to items that you answered strongly disagree. Two points for disagree. Three points for agree. And four points for strongly agree. Item numbers two, five, six, eight, and nine are reverse scored. Sum up the points for all 10 items. Keep score on a continuous scale. Higher scores indicate higher self-esteem, which ranges from 0 to 30. Scores between 15 to 25 are within normal range, while scores below 15 suggest low self-esteem. So what's your score? How high is your self-esteem? Our self-esteem may change from time to time depending on the situations we encounter in our daily life. Since it can be a partly trait that someone can possess, it depends on how you perceive the things coming your way. Let's talk about self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is not considered as a trait, according to Stachkovic and Luthens. Self-efficacy does not refer to your abilities, but rather to your beliefs about what you can do with your abilities. It is your will to produce an effect on a specific things. It is your self-belief to effectively achieve your most important goal. The stronger the belief, the bigger the possibility to achieve a positive result. For instance, you are aiming for a higher grade and you are confidently believing it. Then, it will happen. Have you tried talking to yourself in front of the mirror? What did you see? According to William James, a psychologist, the self is what happens when I reflect upon me. While Taylor described the self as a reflective project, how we see ourselves is geared toward improving ourselves depending on a lot of factors. On the other hand, Dan McAdam, a psychologist, reiterated that even though there are many ways on how we reflect to improve ourselves, it brings us back to three categories. First category is self as social actor. We are portraying different roles and behaving for every type of people in front of us 
since we all care about what people think about us. It is practically for social acceptance. Second is self as motivated agent. People act based on their purpose. They do things based on their own dreams, desires, and planned goals for the future. This, though, is not easily identifiable since it is self-conceptualized, unless it was shared with us. Lastly is self as autobiographical author. He or she as the creator of his or her own life story. It is about how oneself is developed from his or her past up to the present and what he or she will become in the future. As an individual, you are expected to act and decide on your own. Most people tend to decide based on the intuitions and available information that could be a hindrance in making a wise decision. It can be a habit when our decision is always based on what is available or gathered data. There could be a missing link. For instance, you applied for different courses in five different universities. And you were able to qualify in all. Wow! Now, how will you decide? Bazerman and Moore suggested the six steps on how to make a rational decision. Step 1. Define the problem. In your case, select your most desired course. Step 2. Identify the criteria necessary to judge the multiple options so you have to list things to be considered like location, facilities, prestige, etc. Step 3. Weight and rank the criteria based on its importance to you. Do you consider location or the school more than prestige? Step 4. Generate alternatives. List down all the schools that accepted you. Step 5. Rate each alternative on each criteria. Now, you must rate each school on the criteria you have identified. The location, facilities, prestige, etc. And the last step is compute the optimal decision from the options you have listed from step 1. Choose the option that has the highest rating. Once you have decided on your problem, you're good to go. This time, you will have an idea of how well your family members know you by letting each of them write what they think of your strengths and weaknesses are, as well as what they think makes you happy and angry. After the given time, look for the common answers and discuss the result with them and with your teacher. Now that we have learned the concepts of understanding oneself, let's have a review. An unexamined life is not worth living. This is one of the famous lines once uttered by one of the greatest philosophers of ancient Greece, Socrates. Sigmund Freud proposed that there are three components of personality within us, the id, ego, and superego. René Descartes states that the mind is the seat of consciousness. Self-esteem is your evaluation of your own worth. Self-efficacy is your belief on your own abilities. Most people tend to decide based on the intuitions and available information that could be a hindrance in making a wise decision. Six steps on how to make a rational decision. Define the problem. Identify the criteria necessary to judge the multiple options. Weigh the criteria. Generate alternatives. Rate each alternative on each criteria. Compute the optimal decision. Self-development means taking steps to better yourself. It also means efforts towards self-fulfillment. Now that you have a better grasp of yourself, you are to do our last activity. The Roadmap. Recall the most important events of your life 
which you believe have helped you discover yourself more. Complete this roadmap. Personal development is a never-ending chance to improve not only yourself, but also to attract opportunities and affect others. This is from Jim Rohn, one of my favorite motivational speakers, a personal development legend. Before we end our first episode of personal development, I want to share this quote. The major value in life is not what you get. The major value in life is what you become. So, post a picture on your social media accounts and share your unique characteristics, habits, and experiences with your favorite quote. And put hashtag MyPDJourney and DepedTV. This is Teacher Mark. I see greatness in you. Know your worth, make a habit of developing yourself, and be your best version every day. See you in our next episode.